I think we really want to uh, introduce everybody and hear their voices. I know you all are uh, um, eager to, to hear about them. So first I'm going to um, maybe have our credential evaluator start. So if I can start maybe with, uh, with Julie Fournier, if you can introduce yourself, um, say hello to everybody. Great, thanks. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Julie Fournier. I've been with Eastern Washington about 11, 12 years now. Um, as Gabriel said, I'm with the evaluation team. Uh, we are located in the records and registration office here on campus. Uh, we hope to answer any questions you may have or we already may have been working with you. So uh, please uh, ask questions and we hope uh, we can help you any way we can. Thank you. Thanks, Julie. And we do. Um, in the admissions office, we work real closely with our evaluators, too, who help us out all, all the time with our students. So um, next we have Anne. And if you can introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Ann Kendall. I am a credential evaluator here at Eastern Washington University. Um, I've been with Eastern since about 2015. Like Julie said, we work out of Sutton Hall, um, right on the floor below admissions. Uh, we process um, your transcripts and we look forward to working with you. And maybe starting from the west side, heading east, uh, transfer advisor on the west side, uh, Kareem. Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, so my name is Kareem. I am the uh, transfer advisor for students that live on the west side. So if you're a student attending um, anywhere between Whatcom to Clark to Peninsula, uh, I'm your transfer guy. So I'll be helping you with the application process and you know answering any questions that I can to help you uh, choose Eastern as your school. So thank you. Perfect, and just on this side of the mountains, we have Harley Moran. Thank you, Gabriel, and thank you to everyone joining us today. Real quick, I wanna give a shout out to a couple of my students, Nada Gonzalez and Shannon uh, Kavanaugh. I saw you tuned in, so thank you for joining us. Uh, my name's Harley Moran, work with students um, in Central Washington region. My territories are sort of a mouthful, but I like to name them all. Uh, Click Attack, Kid Attack, Douglas, Chelan, Okanagan, and Yakima. Uh, so shout out to all the YBC students, um, Wenatchee Valley College students, Wenatchee Valley College up in OMAC, um, and really all the students that are tuned in today. We appreciate you joining us. Um, we're excited to give you a scholarship and to give you um, some kind of clarification to any questions you have and, um, you know, put you at ease to let you know uh, being an Eagle this fall is going to be awesome. So uh, we're excited to have you, and I'll pass it over back to Gabriel. Thank you. All right, thanks, Harley. Yes, and thanks for the reminder of the $500 scholarship. So stay till the end. We wanna, we wanna announce that, um, super exciting. Um, next, you know, I do wanna introduce, she's not on here today, but I wanna introduce Ana Sapien, who is another um, one of our transfer advisors who focuses on Columbia Basin College. So if some of you students are from there. You probably see her uh, generally on Tuesdays or she's available for you now, you, um, on, uh, you know, virtually on Tuesdays. Um, and also Walla Walla Community College. Um, she, she attends both of those schools and recruits kind of and helps out in both of those areas too. So Ana Sapien, who's not here with us today, but um, a super, uh, a super um, help in our transfer efforts here at Eastern Washington University. And um, last but not least, of course, I want to introduce Cheyenne Robertson, who at the same time will also uh, move in and, and uh, give us a quick presentation about, um, yeah, um, you know, and so I'll have her introduce herself, uh, Cheyenne. Yeah, hi guys, um, I'm Cheyenne Robertson. Um, I work in the east side of Washington, mostly the Spokane area. Um, so I work with SFCC, SCC, and then a little bit of North Idaho um, at North Idaho College. Um, I'm happy to help anyone that, that can contact me. I'm here to help you or direct you to the right person. Um, so now I'm just going to share my screen with you guys so you can see our presentation um, and get that going. Um, so this presentation is just kind of going to be a light overview of um, some common questions we get from students and kind of get some questions going. So if you do have questions, there is a Q&A box. So feel free to type your questions in there um, if you have them while I'm presenting, presenting this. Um, so the first thing we're just going to talk about is financial aid. Um, so as of Monday, a majority, if not all, of the financial aid packages for transfer students should be out to you guys. So check your email. Um, that's going to be the point of contact the university will have with you. Um, so just um, what I encourage students to do is download, you know, uh, Outlook on your phone. Um, so it's always right there for you um, to see when you get an email. So check your financial aid packages. If you have questions, reach out to our financial aid office. Um, they're a huge help. 
um, in getting, getting your questions answered. Um, and then housing. Um, so housing does look a little different this year with COVID-19 and all of that. So it is optional for students to live on campus if you want for the fall 2020 academic year. Um, single rooms will only be offered. So um, there won't be any roommates. Um, so you'll have a room by yourself if you choose to live on campus. Um, I wanted to go over a little bit of the housing options. Um, so um, this is a dorm style, style housing option. Um, this is Sinyaminsu. Um, so what's great about this, like I said, is it's gonna be single rooms only. So you will have a big room to yourself, which is great. Um, but they do have like a living room and kitchen style um, on each floor. So if you wanna cook by yourself or for yourself, you have that option. Um, and it is EW's, EWU's newest residence hall, which is pretty great. Um, and then laundry rooms are available on each floor. So it's a great option for you if you wanna have that on campus feel. Um, if you're looking to do a little more um, independent living, let's say, um, we do have university apartments that are great. So we have the Anna Maria apartment and the townhouse apartments. Um, so they do have their own each different floor plan, um, depending on how many people you want to live with. Um, they do have outdoor living, which is great for students. Um, what's also great about this option is you're only required um, to be responsible for yourself, um, which is great. So like, let's say if a roommate moved out halfway through the quarter, um, you're only responsible for your rent. Um, the university handles everything else outside of that. So um, it's a great option if you're a little bit worried about that. You're just responsible for yourself and for your rent. No one else's. Um, the next big thing is programs. Um, this is something we like to encourage students to just research. Um, so some programs do have their separate application process, um, which you do kind of need to know about so you can get into those programs. So some popular ones are social work, business, dental hygiene, and education. Um, so if you go to their website, um, they do outline everything in the application process that you need to know. Um, so just make sure you're doing your research and, and get all those ducks in a row for, for fall term if, if you're looking at any of those majors. Um, and then just wanted to highlight Bellevue College. Um, if you're looking to stay in the Seattle area, um, we do offer some bachelor's programs at Bellevue College. Um, so it's psychology and inter interdisciplinary studies. Um, so if you don't want to leave the Seattle area at all, this is a great option for you if you're interested in those majors. And then orientation, this is a fun one. Um, so make sure you're checking your Eagles email. Um, this is how, like I said, the university will contact you. And this is how um, we'll contact you about orientation in specific. Um, so we have like an online version of orientation now um, and a on-campus orientation. So You'll get your e Eagles email and see the online version. It has a few modules for you to complete to get to know things about the university. Um, and then we have our on-campus orientation as well, um, which is the transformation orientation. Um, and that will happen on September 21st. Um, so a few days before classes begin. Um, and then you can just kind of tour the campus if you haven't got the opportunity yet, um, meet with some professors, meet some new people. And then um, family and friends are welcome to attend if you would like them to come. Um, but the biggest thing I can say is just visit our orientation webpage. Um, they have the most complete information on there um, about what orientation will look like, any FAQs if you have questions about orientation as well. Um, so now I'm going to go over the important part. So kind of next steps. Um, I'm going to share another screen with you. Um, so this is kind of what we look at um, for students. So number one is going to be confirming your enrollment. Um, and that's important. That kind of just confirms your spot at Eastern. Um, and let me just show you, this is the web page um, that you'll go to, to, to kind of see all of these, these steps. Um, so like I said, confirming your enrollment is important. So that's completing the enrollment form um, and then paying that confirmation fee. Um, that will save your spot and get you all ready to go for fall. Um, step two is setting up your net ID and password. Um, this is important to really see like your financial aid. If you, if you can't see that, you'll want to log into our EagleNet and you need to set that net ID password to do that. Um, so steps on how to do that is all linked here. Um, and I'm sure we can put it in, in the chat for you guys so you can get that link to this. Um, and then apply for campus housing. So if you're interested in like Sinyaminsu dorm style or those apartment style living, um, you wanna apply for campus housing and, and get, um, get those spots saved for yourself. And then again, I'm gonna just keep harping on the email because this is a really important way for us to communicate with you. Um, so setting up that Eagles email um, is really, I would say, one of very important steps just so you get all the communication you can from us um, that way. And then learning about new, story, new student orientation and meeting with your advisor. So for a transfer student, it's really important to meet with an advisor um, as it's important to get in the classes you need as soon as you can. 
Um, so just making sure you're getting all that done, orientation, and even just reaching out to our academic um, advisors. And then six, taking a math placement test. Um, so this can be just a tad bit confusing for some transfer students. Um, kind of the rule of thumb is if you've taken a math, um, math class 100 level or higher, um, then you normally wouldn't have to take the math placement test. But if you do have questions, um, we do have the FAQ section right here where you can kind of um, look through those. And if you have more questions, reach out to us or, or the math department as well. And then um, submitting your final transcripts to us is really important. Um, if you're currently in classes right now, um, we wanna also get those, those classes into our degree audit. So making sure you're sending all final transcripts to us um, so we can get that to our system. And then financial aid. So just making sure you have everything ready to go for fall with any um, documents they may need or just making sure it's all um, accepted and ready to go. And then number nine is the final one, submitting your immunization records um, is important as well. So just make sure you go and do that. If you have questions about it, um, you can get more information here. And then I'm just gonna go back. And then, so all those listed here, um, and then just take a little quick note about the transcript evaluation and how that works. Um, like Gabriel said, we do have our, our evaluators here with us so they can kind of help answer your questions more in depth. Um, but we just want to want you guys to know that um, like your transcript should be evaluated if you've been admitted. Your transcript should be evaluated and accessible through SOAR, um, which is a, a system we use to have a degree audit. Um, and then every course is evaluated. We look to see how it's transferable, how it transfers, and how it fulfills requirements for you. Um, and you can go to the website um, transferring credits here. Um, and this just kind of shows you um, some more things that you may need to know. Um, transferology is a great place, and then just kind of how um, transfer, transfer credit works. And then I'm just going to go, this is our contact page. Um, so if you do have any questions, um, like Gabriel, myself, and Kareem are here to help, um, as well as Harley um, and Anna as well. Um, but, but we're here to help or direct you in the right, in the right, to the right person. So like I said, if you have questions, put them in the Q&A box. We're happy to help. And I'm going to pass it back to Gabriel. All right, thank you, Cheyenne. Yes, and you know we want to get um, a link up there to um, to give uh, so that you can see our link that has all of our um, contact information. If we can get that link up there too, so everybody can see it too. Um, and it, it it doesn't only have Kareem, Cheyenne, and my contact in there, but also has all of our admission folks um, um, that might be closest to you too, um, in terms of your region where you live too. So yeah, so um, uh, super important, right, in terms of uh, transferability of courses. And I know I, I oftentimes get questions over the phone. I get emails about how do courses transfer and what, what we look at too. And I know it's a very detailed process. And so that's why we have our team of experts who look at those uh, transcripts um, to be able to award and, and, and how that fits within the degree that you're hoping to earn here at Eastern. So with that said, I'll uh, pass it over to Anne who will give us a little bit more information about what they do in that office and um, hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense in terms of your transfer work or team. Okay, um, when you send us your transcript, we do an evaluation and enter it in um, our system, which then outputs to the SOAR audit for you to see. Uh, generally, there are most of the community colleges, we have a lot of students coming from the Community colleges have um, established equivalencies. If something doesn't um, have an equivalency, we send it out to the departments and we try and get that for you. Um, if you're questioning one or not understanding how one comes in, you can reach out to us and we'll explain that or we can have it. Um, possibly reviewed again. Um, the main thing is to get all your transcripts into us, all your final transcripts. It's also very helpful to have your high school transcripts um, for the foreign language requirement. If you took two years of the same foreign language, uh, we can clear that. And then also um, to make sure that your final transcript has any degree posted on it as well. And I think um, that about covers it. Julie, do you have anything to add to that? Oh, Julie, you're muted. If you can unmute Julie. 
<laughs> yep. Thank you. Sorry. The only thing I can think to add to that is make sure to contact us if you have any questions about specific courses um, and how those might apply. Uh, we do have an email contact you can reach us and it is simply EWU evaluations at ew.edu and we'd love to hear from you and just answer any of those specific questions to your situation. Okay, back to you, Gabriel. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so I think this is the time when we are, we do want to go into some Q&A. We do have some questions out here. It looks like we have about six questions so far. So if you have some questions about the transferability of your coursework, um, anything in terms of what's next, um, uh, please let us know. But we are going to go through and answer some of these questions. Um, and since we are on the topic of transferability of courses, there is a question here from Michelle Robertson, uh, who is saying, if I have a class that didn't transfer that I feel should um, should have transferred, how do I go in and uh, like appeal the pro appeal it? What, what what's what's the process for something like that? If um, Anne or Julie can answer, that's a great question. Um, what we need for students to do at this moment is to email us, let us know what class that they uh, have a question about. If they have the course syllabus, that helps us even more. Um, we tend to find that faculty want to see a course syllabus. Um, so they just need to let us know uh, what course and we can let you know if it's, you know, what the status is. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, and, I, and I've worked with students like that before where, um, yeah, you kind of just look at what does the course fit? Is there an equivalency and both the professors look at it right and, we, and, and then we, we basically create an equivalency if it works right. And it's great work. We're really happy to do it because sure. for the next student that maybe took that course after you and transfers over to us, um, it makes it so much easier for them too. So we're really happy to do that work as well. Um, I'm going to head up to the top here. Um, and ask the question, Isabel Sanchez is asking, if you're coming from a different school, will you need a new financial aid card? And I think Harley is uh, ready to answer that. Definitely, thank you. And um, thanks for the great presentation and all that great stuff. Um, and just to kind of add real quick in regards to the classes that, you know, transferring over, um, I always tell students, we just want to make sure that it fits what our, you know, professors are teaching here and, you know, in regards to what you learn there. So um, we wanna make sure that's equal and that same level of rigor or content is the same. So just wanted to add that. Um, and Isabel, great question in regards to financial aid and, and um, you know different things like that. When you go to um, a new institution, yes, you need to apply and not even a new institution. Every year you have to reapply for financial aid. That application opens up October 1st. Um, and you wanna make sure that you add any schools that you um, want to go to definitely at Eastern um, and then that way our financial aid office is able to receive that process it create you an award letter um, I wish it was as quick as I just said that it takes a little bit more time than that um, you know usually you apply in October things get processed throughout the next few months and then sometime around late March early April is when you'll receive an award letter that shows what you're eligible for what you'll be receiving next to your cost of attendance and then you can kind of compare um, and contrast like, okay, this is what I still need to come up with or, hey, I have excess money and can use it on this and start creating that budget. So um, yes, you will need to apply for FAFSA when coming to, um, you know, our new school. Yeah, definitely. And like, you know, and like everything has a process. I think education is, 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 is like that. It, there's, a, there, there's a process for everything and, um, and keep at it, right? Um, sometimes it's filling out one application and responding to emails and maybe some other things. But in terms of financial aid, it's probably the most important thing. It's what really gets you into, the, in, into, um, into school and, and, um, and, and being here financially healthy as well. So pay attention to that and get the help when you need it, Ms. Heller. Um, I'll go with the next question, um, and it looks like Cheyenne Robertson wants to answer this one. Will all classes be online as hinted by the announcement this morning? And if you didn't hear the announcement this morning, our president, along with some other um, uh, uh, advisors of hers, um, kind of talked a little bit about what's going to happen in the fall and what we should expect. Yeah, so um, what they kind of stated this morning um, was we're going to do an online first approach. So kind of what's going to happen is 
we're going to see how the summer progresses, but we're moving most things online um, with um, some availability for like labs to be in person, but they are having major flexibility um, in that as well. So we're going to just kind of see how summer summer rolls out and from there, but right now things seems like things will be online and they're going to transition most classes to being online. Yeah, thank you, Cheyenne. And I know, right, with um, with all these changes and everything, and I, I know too, there's they're definitely trying to build as much of those courses that are um, going to be in person, that could be in person, that might need to be in person. They're trying to build those too. So if that's a possibility, if there's flexibility to um, be in the classroom for labs and things like that, you know, Eastern wants to accommodate and make that happen. But first, of course, comes the health and uh, safety of all of the people that attend Eastern. Uh, next, I want to go to a question Kareem wants to answer. It says, I heard as a junior that you will be emailed an appointment with an advisor. I saw they went out April 13th. If I'm correct, I haven't received mine yet. I'm, am, am I missing out on something about the advising, Kareem? Yeah, um, what I have to say about that is uh, I think that, yeah, if you, you if you checked your email and there's not anything there, um, reach out to CAR, which is our academic advising office, and uh, see if you could get an appointment with them to um, ask them more questions. And I'll drop that link in the, uh, in the uh, chat on how to contact them. You need to unmute yourself, Gabriel. That's right, that's right. So it looks like Alexandra Brown had that question, but uh, down below too, Alexander, Ham also had the question too about advising um, too. So so yeah, I think the best bet what I what um what what I see too is 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 giving the advising office a call and kind of setting up that way. But yeah, thanks Kareem for helping out with that. Um, a couple questions about housing. Um, Harley wants to answer: Will single room housing be only for the fall semester by Riley Jones? For sure. Thanks, Gabriel. And I, I kind of saw a few uh, questions about housing, so I'm going to try and hit on both of them. I believe um, one of my students, Shannon Ke uh, Kevin, I asked one as well. So um, to answer the first question from Riley, um, will uh, single rooms for housing be um, only for the fall? Uh, that's sort of the plan right now. Again, with this COVID you know, pandemic, um, our presidents uh, and the different leadership on campus, including housing director, is trying to kind of you know keep that in mind when making decisions for fall. It will be individual rooms, but again, they will kind of explore um, you know offering uh, double room or having roommates you know in the next quarters to come. So like winter, it's still a possibility. It's not um, totally out of the picture yet that you you know will never have a roommate this uh, year if that makes sense. I'm not sure if anybody wants to add anything to that, but. To go on to the second question um, regarding when will housing be secured, um, that application opened up in February, the initial part of the application where students paid the $125, um, put their top choice rooms um, and, and kind of filled up that initial part of the survey. That second part of the housing application will open up um, later on in May, possibly early June. And that's where you really dive in, choose your room, um, choose the hall um, and are able to um, sort of access that map and secure your spot. So that um, will definitely be coming, be checking out your email for um, updates from housing. Um, and then just to add, we're actually having a housing webinar, I believe it's this Friday, um, and maybe we can put the link to sign up for that, uh, where you can ask questions to housing about, you know, what the cost will be this year due to, you know, single room occupancy, um, any questions about, um, you know, meal plans, et cetera, uh, housing will be available and, and to answer those questions. So, um, but again, hopefully that answered your question, Shannon, it'll be available hopefully uh, the end of this month, beginning of June, that second part of the application. Yes, thank you, Harley. And just a reminder, I'm glad that everybody is here today um, and congratulations for all of you who are attending that are admitted as well. Um, but $500 scholarship, we're going to do that a little bit later. We're going to keep going through some questions here. And if you have more, keep, keep spitting them out at us because um, th these are great questions to be asking. Um, so next from Mackenzie, looks like Julie wants to answer this one. You mentioned that high school foreign language could cover the foreign language requirement. Is that accurate? Great question. So if you completed two years of the same 
spoken language in high school that can clear your language requirement here at Eastern. So what that requires is an official transcript um, to be sent to the admissions office and then we can, um, in the evaluation unit, we will take care of that for you. Um, I also saw someone mention asking if there was a time frame on that and there's not, it just has to be the same language um, two years progressive um, with passing grades. So um, that's that's what we need to see. Yeah, and uh, it looks like there's another kind of um, question for our evaluators here. When it when is the latest to submit an official transcript? Um, I am taking a class through SEC over the summer, and I am just wondering when I should submit submit uh, should submit that transcript by Grace, if it uh, looks like Anne wants to answer that one. Thank you for the question. Yes, you would want to submit that transcript after your final grades have been posted. Submit that um, through admissions and we'll receive it and evaluate it and update your coursework. And just to note too, um, in terms of admissions, currently we are accepting students uh, who send us an official transcript, but we know that uh, also, uh, what, we, what we, we do, we encourage you to go onto your school website and, and send us your official when, uh, when you feel like all of your coursework is, is, is done and ready to. So, but in terms of admissions, in terms of being accepted to Eastern, we currently will accept unofficial documents, but um, of course, in order to get registered for courses and move on, once you are uh, a student here, we, we want to see all those final official transcripts. So if you can get those into us sooner than later, that would be I think you're muted, man. I think Gabriel froze, so we're just gonna go forward. Um, so we did, we do have a lot of questions to answer, so um, I'll just hop on and facilitate this a little bit. Um, so it looks like, um, um, Anne, you want to answer one by Grace? Um, if I answered, sorry. Didn't know where Gabriel was. Let me see. Um, here, I'll answer this one. Um, will COVID-19 affect meal plans uh, being used and how they're used? Um, it shouldn't really affect it. All our dining facilities will be open. There might be some limitations on which ones are open, um, but um, that shouldn't affect too much. Um, that you still will have options of how much you want to spend at the dining halls and things like that. Uh, affect, affect that too much there. Let's see where we're at here. Hope you guys are having a great Tuesday. Maybe gonna, it's beautiful here in Spokane, so I'm hoping it's nice where you are as well. Um, let's see where we're at. Maybe we can try and answer that question from Grace um, Dumba, Cheyenne, and I think Anne would like to answer it live. Yeah, okay, so let's do it with Grace. Um, so when is the latest to submit an official transcript? I'm taking a class through SCC over the summer and I'm just wondering when I should submit the transcript. Um, you would want to submit your transcript after your final grades have posted. Um, you can send that through their website to admissions. Uh, they'll update us when the transcript has come in and we'll evaluate that and update all the information um, will be visible on your SOAR audit for you to see as well. Awesome, thank you. Um, and then let's keep going here. Um, um, so this is to add to Mackenzie's question, I'm assuming about the, um, the foreign language. How recent does that high school experience need to be? Um, as far as I know, um, there's no limitation or time limit. It just needs to be the same foreign language that needs to be completed. So two years of the same foreign language. And then it looks like Kareem wants to answer one. So what is the difference between direct subsidized and unsubsidized loan? Ooh, I like talking about money. Um, so yeah, subsidized loans and unsubsidized loans are gonna be offered by the government. So when you're filling out your FAFSA and you receive your awards, um, the difference between the major difference between these loans is that 
Um, the direct subsidized is a need-based loan um, provided to undergraduate students, which you will not have to pay the uh, interest that is accrued on that while you're in school. The government actually pays the interest on that. The unsubsidized, unsubsidized loan, however, you will have to pay the accrued interest um, throughout the entirety of that loan um, being um, uh, open. So, uh, you know, the that that is the major difference. Who's going to be or who's going to be paying the um, uh, the uh, accrued interest on those loans? Awesome. Thanks, Kareem. Um, now we're going to go with Matthew's question. It looks like Harley wants to answer it. Um, so if I applied for a roommate um, for housing and I'm only offered a single housing, um, will the cost of a single room that I'm assigned be multiple, multiplied the pricing or single house pricing? Great question, Matthew. And thank you, Cheyenne, for uh, mentioning that. Um, so that's, again, something that housing is still figuring out and trying to determine. Uh, they're working really closely with, um, you know, all sort of leaders on campus to come up with a a fair price, right, for everyone, because we know that traditionally single rooms cost more than ind um, individual rooms, I'm sorry, single rooms cost more than double rooms. Um, and so, you know, those students that, um, you know, are looking into a double room due to saving some money, um, you know, that is a big question for them. Will that cost be different? Um, we are having a webinar from housing this Friday, and I would say definitely try and tune into that if you can, but if not, maybe Friday afternoon, you can um, you know, follow up with housing via email. We can get that email out to you uh, in the chat and just kind of ask them, hey, have the rates for fall 2020 been determined yet? And they'll be able to give you a little bit more insight on that. Um, again, it's still something that they're trying to work on. It's, um, we're kind of getting hit with all these punches and trying to keep up with them and, and you know, come, with, uh, you know, come with good outcomes for students that serve everyone. So, um, I wish we had a solid answer for you right now, but I'd say by Friday, there should be a little bit more um, info on that um, after housing does their webinar. All right, thank you all. It looks like you all were able to manage without me. Thank you for your patience. Um, yeah, so I'll, back, I'll bounce back in. It looks like we do have um, one question still in the Q&A box. And uh, so yeah, thanks for everybody for still being here. Remember, we're still giving off a $500 scholarship here in a little bit. So um, yeah, so I'll go and ask this question. Cheyenne wants to answer this from Autumn Sage. If uh, we want to live in a two or, two or three bedroom apartment townhouse, will we still only have singular occupancy for those options? Um, so, so no, so we actually just got this clarification from housing. So the plan is to still have um, two to three people in that apartment. Since it is an apartment, um, you do have more space in your own room. Um, so you would be able to live with two or three people depending on the unit size. Um, that's still the plan um, to go with, with that occupancy. And I'll move on to the next question too by um, Sarah Diaz. Uh, since classes are going mostly online, how much less will tuition cost? Obviously, there's, there will still need to be tuition to pay for technology and faculty, but there should be a, different, a differential for the loss of face-to-face. -face. Does anyone have a, um, I could take that one. I, I don't believe there is gonna be a difference in tuition costs. Um, they might, um, you know, try to help with some of those mandatory fees and see what they can do there. Um, but it, you still are getting the same learning um, and they haven't made a, a, a full decision on not face-to-face. -face. It's just online at the moment and there is flexibility around that. So as far as I'm, I understand um, tuition will stay around the same. We are the most affordable four-year institution in the state of Washington. Um, so most students pay around $7,500 um, for the year for tuition and fees. Thank you, Cheyenne, for that. Yeah, I, there hasn't been an announcement, but um, if anything does come up, I know students will be notified, and that's why we continue to say keep checking that Eagles email because there's information goes out um, quite frequently as well. Um, okay, so from uh, Julia, uh, where can you find more information on the university apartments that were mentioned earlier? I don't know if Cheyenne, if you have, if you might, or if someone, if we can put a direct link out there for everyone. Yeah, yeah, we can put a link. Um, I'll put a link to the housing website, and that kind of gives you some information about the apartments um, that are available. So I'll put the link in the chat for you guys to take a look at that. 
Yeah, great options. And I know too, um, correct me if I'm, right, uh, if I'm wrong, Shannon, but I think students could lease when they lease like a like a townhouse, they lease their bedroom, right? They don't have to lease the whole unit. So like if I I wanted to move out in September or in June at the end of the year, uh, you know, I it, it won't affect my roommates, isn't that correct? Correct, yeah. So you are on your own lease. Um, so the, and then it's not like one unit together. You have your own lease with the university. Um, so like I said in that presentation, if a roommate decided to leave throughout the quarter, you are not responsible for their rent. Um, that's for them to work out with the university. And just to answer quickly, Ashley uh, Boland's question, when do we need to start signing up for fall classes? So uh, you wanna reach out to our advising office as soon as possible, set a, give them a call um, and, and, and they should be able to set up an appointment with you to, to talk about you know, sort of registering for classes and what's next too. They're really helpful, uh, be, stay connected with your advisor because they're really gonna be the ones that helps you uh, lead into the advisement that you're gonna get directly into your program or in, in general, right, uh, give you that guidance to complete your degree. Um, so Alexandra Brown has another question here that Harley wants to answer, right? Um, I understand the university needs, to, uh, needs my tax information, but since I'm married, they want my spouse as well. Even though we're, we weren't married in 2018, the problem is I don't know his tax information because we cannot receive any of it. Will this affect my financial aid or, or attend status at the school? Carly. Great question. And, you know, I just want to address it, um, Alexandria. Great question for all people, whether it's like marriage is the you know, um, factor of change of income or you lost a job or anything at all. So financial aid um, needs to get that most up-to-date information um, so they can work on like a professional judgment to reevaluate what your income is and be able to generate that award letter um, that shows um, sort of what you'll be receiving. That's not necessarily something that Eastern wants to do or is just picking on you like, hey, you got a husband, You're, you know, we wanna get that information. Um, it's more so the federal government requires all that information in order to determine eligibility for any state and federal funding. Um, and so they need that most up-to-date sort of information of all income. Um, you know, I would say reach out to them. We'll give you their email definitely. And if you want help drafting the email, I'd say what you typed in the, the question box is perfect. And financial aid can kind of give you an idea of what steps you'll need to take and how that may impact your award. Um, it's not necessarily, you know, I don't want to say it'll impact in a bad way. You know, a lot of the different um, federal funding income guidelines have actually been extended. I know the one in Washington has. Um, the income went up a little bit in order for students to be eligible. Um, and so, you know, you could be in that bracket still and could possibly get some good funding. So um, don't think it might impact it in a bad way. Um, it could help you out a lot more than you think. And um, again, we'll definitely get you their email so you can reach out to them. And that again goes to anybody that's being impacted by COVID-19 or that's lost their job or their parents lost their job or anything, you know, at all, um, you know, definitely reach out to financial aid because they'll be able to um, readjust your package and it could be a good thing, a good turnout, so. And I think key too is uh, to reach out. Um, it seems like it, it, um, the way that our financial aid office is working it is kind of case by case. So reach out if you know that um, there has definitely been some changes or uncertainties in your in your income because of kind of what's happening. So from Alexander Ham, um, is the tuition split into three payments throughout the quarters during the years? I'll answer this. Yes, um, they they are. So tuition is broken down into in, into quarters, and same with the um, your financial aid, your, your, the financial aid support that you're going to get too. So it's all kind of split into at least fall, winter. And spring, and of course, if you um, attend summer, then then you talk to financial aid and keep moving forward that way. Like that. From Matthew Russo, um, is it for sure that all of, all or most classes will be online this fall? If so, can I just take classes from the state I live in to save on money? Does anybody want to try answering that question? If not I can. I think it's a great, I, I think um, it's a definitely a possibility, but I would suggest that you reach out to the department um, that, uh, you know, where you're looking to take courses, right? So um, some departments might be a little bit more flexible, right? But uh, we also know that 
uh, courses are trying to be as um, as as in person as possible if they can be. And so, if you're taking some science courses and some labs are required, where maybe attendance is also required, um, that could be an issue. But I think. Um, so stay in close contact with your advisor, reach out to your advisor, talk to them. Um, and also um, it'd be a question about the department and the degree that you're looking for. And also it could be even case by case from course to course and the professors and, and, and how they're teaching too. All right, and Miriam, or, or um, yeah, Miriam, what if we want, to dorm in with a family member that is also a student? And they want to answer that. So basically the question is, could we double up in a, in, in a room if possible? Um, I can take that one. Um, I think probably the best option would be maybe the apartments for you. They do have like single family options um, that you can look into and that might be the best, the best option um, to, for using university housing. Um, so I would just take a look at that link I sent um, for those apartment housing options because they do have that available um, for families um, that want to live together. Perfect. And uh, a, another dorm related question. So um, I read that there's a possibility of living in the same hall as people with similar majors as yours. How could we find this out from Alexa Fisher? And it looks like Harley Moran wants to answer this one. Thank you, and, and definitely feel free to, to add in, Cheyenne. I appreciate the, the extensive knowledge you have, and it helps helps me understand, too. But um, definitely, to my knowledge, now I forgot the question because I did a long intro. I'm sorry. Um, okay, so is there a possibility that you can live in the same area as people that major with you? Um, so yeah, definitely on your housing application, you'll indicate different interests, clubs and organizations, majors that you, or, you know, the major that you want to go into, and, um, you know, any roommates you have in mind, you can list on that. And then again, when that second part of the application opens up here, coming up in the next month or so, um, housing is going to ask a little bit more detailed questions. And anybody that listed a roommate, um, you know, housing is going to try and honor to place you guys near each other. It's not going to be in the same room, right? Because it's all individual, but they're going to do their best to like, place you across the hall from each other or next door to each other um, in regards to like people with the same majors. Um, it's interesting how it kind of all um, turns out and I don't know if housing does their little magic with it, but um, they have a survey of sort of what everybody's interested in, uh, right? They, you, they ask that question in the housing application and then housing will do their best to kind of try and place students um, accordingly, um, you know, based on, um, uh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? based on like their matching, I don't know, there's a more fancier word of, uh, for it. But anyway, if that makes sense, hopefully it does. Um, so yeah, um, not necessarily rooming together is an option, but they're gonna try and put you in the near vicinity. And then there was a question about what if we want a room with a dorm or in a dorm with a family member that's also a student. So again, they're, they're doing it real individual style this year. Definitely explore those um, housing apartment options for families. Not sure if that applies to like cousins, but you know, it's a good question to ask. Um, but again, I would say on your housing application, the second part, try and indicate that you do want to live near this person in there, and then they'll try and place you next to them or at least close by. Yeah, and since the live on requirement has kind of been lifted too, um, you know, there it's possible that there might be a little bit more flexibility on choosing what dorms are available for you and that sort of thing. At least that that could be the assumption. But at the same time, right? We also know that dorms are super popular, and um, and and those could also fill fast too. Well, I'm just gonna jump in here real quick. Um, so we had some questions about uh, advi or tr uh, tra uh, transfer credits. Um, and I also just wanted to add that, you know, as far as an option of a, you know, university that you're going to choose to go to, um, the flexibility in a lot of Eastern's programs, since we're on a rolling admissions, you know, as a transfer student, that flexibility for you to jump right into one of your majors and maybe already having taken your um, prereqs for those classes, um, there's a lot of flexibility and that's why a lot of transfer students actually choose Eastern as a school to be able to transfer to um, since many of our programs don't have uh, specific applications. You kind of just declare your major uh, once you're on campus. But I'm going to hand it off to uh, Julie 
Uh, we have a question from Emmeline, and that is, what if I have more than 90 transfer credits? And then after that, um, we have another question um, regarding the AA. So um, yeah, go ahead, Julie. Great, thank you. So sometimes for students, they do find that they have more than 90 credits. So there's two things to, to know. For lower division, we will only give you a maximum of 90, but we look at every course. And if we can provide you with a direct equivalency or clearances that are gonna benefit you and move you towards graduation, that's what we do. And there's sometimes, um, at the very end, if you need some extra credit, you know, we can talk about that. But just know that every course that you've taken will be considered and we can try to, we will do our best to use that to help you moving forward. If any of the students have credit that they've completed from a four year institution that they're transferring with, um, we'll also take 45 upper division credits um, if that happens to be your situation. It looks Thank like we might have missed a couple of questions. Yeah, Kareem, go ahead. I think there were some other questions. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. And we have another question. Um, uh, so Nara Gonzalez, um, let's see. So uh, is it possible that some credits did not transfer due to the fact that AAs have not officially been confirmed since some colleges are working from home and it takes them more time to confirm and finalize their AAs? So I'm going to hand this off to Anne. Um, I guess that is a possibility that they haven't sent us the, the final transcript with your um, AA or DTA showing on there. I would uh, try and order the final transcript and make sure sometimes there's a box that you can check saying don't send till the AA is posted. You can always send us uh, an email at our evaluations email and um, we can confirm that we have the final transcript for you. Uh, we're happy to do that. So that's um, always an option. Right on, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna hand it off back to Gabriel. All right, thank you all for that help. It looks like there were some questions that were answered. I wasn't able to see them that moment that I was kind of logged off. So we'll go with Julia um, asks, how does paying for university apartments work? Is it more like rent where you pay month by month or more like dorms? Just wondering how you end up paying for them. Anybody have an answer for that one? Yeah, so it is, um, it is like rent, I believe. Um, if you go on that website, it does say how much it is per month. Um, so you can either pay that in a lump sum if you would like or per month um, um, for, you know, every month that you would like. Um, it's roughly, the prices change depending on how many um, uh, roommates you have. Um, but all of that information is on that, that link I sent, um, but it is per month from what I can understand. All right, you know, I'm gonna go down just because Harley's ready to answer this question. Does financial aid kick in automatically as soon as it, as soon as classes start by Shannon? I wanted to answer that uh, secretly because Shannon's one of my students, um, I believe so. That would be so embarrassing if I'm thinking of somebody else, but I'm pretty sure you're one of my students. Anyway, um, financial aid does kick in once you uh, start. So how it works is, um, the sort of student financial services works very closely with financial aid to make sure all of your actual fees are added. Um, you know, the estimated cost of attendance, that's the key word, sort of estimated books can vary, right? It could be a little bit less, it could be a little bit more, um, depending on the types of classes you're taking, lab fees, if you're a science major, all of those different fees, tuition, housing and meals, whatever plan you got, they all are applied to your account. And then once um, financial aid sends over all of your money, let's just say it that way, to student financial uh, services, they will deduct all of those different fees. And then any excess money will be sent to you if you have a like direct deposit or a check um, in a check form, student financial services works on getting you that. I'd say it usually comes in the next like a uh, couple of weeks after starting. And within the next two weeks, you should be receiving some type of return um, again, once all those fees are applied to your account. And then you did have a question about the scholarship notification. Um, 
I believe it was you, when will scholarship award letters be available to see? So those um, scholarships might not apply or be applied on your first award letter. Um, I know that the scholarship uh, sort of folks in financial aid are still working with committees that um, have donated money to Eastern and they are kind of sending in those applications based on um, if you're eligible for that specific one or not. And these committees are still making decisions. So I actually was talking to one of my uh, students' parents today, how um, her son might get another award letter and another one, possibly if he keeps getting these scholarship opportunities that he's eligible for that financial aid kind of flags you for. So um, those could be coming. I'd say if you want um, additional info, it'd be good to follow up with financial aid because they give you a more solid date. Um, to let you know if you are eligible, if you did get one, if you should be expecting one, et cetera. Um, and then if I can real quick, Gabriel, there was a really good question from a student uh, from Riley Jones. Um, because I would be moving to a new city without knowing anyone, I'm a little uh, worried about living alone, taking online classes and not being able to participate in these fun social activities. Um, you know, he's kind of worried that that'll be um, detrimental to his college experience. Um, I understand I'm not living alone. Let's see here. Um, I understand I'm not alone in this and wondering what your thoughts are on um, sort of how we can engage as a, in a new school as a transfer student during this interesting time, right? Um, it, I, I'm really glad you asked that question, Riley. Um, I know it's not necessarily on topic to financial aid, but you know, it's definitely a learning curve for all of us. I can tell you, I feel like I've been more engaged with my team um, and different faculty, Julie, and I mean, I don't even think I've you know, ever met you face to face because I work off campus most of the time. So I've been able to meet folks. Um, they're definitely tr incorporating activities and sessions to make it engaging via Zoom. And I know that's not you know, ideal, right? But um, just trying to keep up with this pandemic and stay engaging with our students, we're trying to make these more available and accessible to you all. Faculty are working very hard on creating different activities to make that engagement with students as a transfer you'll be going into a program more so or per se and so you'll be able to connect with that cohort of students that are also interested in that major and you can connect sort of that way our student life department has done amazing work on creating um, different activities for students to stay engaged even during this COVID-19 they have like a whole page dedicated to like student life activities that are still going on um, you know, not necessarily in person, but, you know, on Zoom or, hey, we're having a, a video game, you know, challenge or whatever. There's so many different things and um, outdoor activities, you know, aren't even limited. They're, you know, there's still uh, social distancing things may apply, but I believe our Epic Outdoors Department are still doing outdoor activities with students. So there's definitely a lot of ways to engage. Um, and I would say, you know, our fingers are crossed that moving into the fall, some of these restrictions might start easy, you know, be lifted, easing off and so it could be that mid-fall you might be seeing more uh, in-face activities more hybrid type of classes versus all online um, so I would say just kind of hang in there um, definitely reach out to folks like us and we can um, try and get you connected to different students on social media um, but we're definitely working as best as we can to try and keep it engaging um, and as soon as those you know restrictions are lifted our president's going to follow those um, updates and try and um, continue to make it better, um, you know, for our students. So I know that was a long explanation, but hopefully that was a good good thing to end on, Gabriel. Yeah, no, thank you, Harley. You know, and um, we do have some other questions in the Q&A. We have nine questions in there, and I'm going to ask my team if you all can see those questions and if you could go ahead and start typing those in. Uh, we are getting close to concluding our event here, but before we do that, we want to pass it over to Cheyenne because we want to give every well, not everybody, but somebody five hundred dollars. <laughs> It'd be nice if we could get everybody, everybody that right. But thank you all for attending today. It's really a, um, it's really uh, nice to see everybody connecting, especially you know regarding that last question about you know feeling connected on campus and stuff. And we're all trying to new new things and. And remember, we're all in it together, right? It, it seems like the whole world is in it together. So hang in there. We're doing the same thing too. So um, with that, I'll pass it over to Cheyenne. I think she's got um, an, an, uh, a, a winner maybe here. And yeah, there. yeah. So it's the exciting part. I get the fun part of the whole day right here. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. So um, we do have um, a wheel. So it should spin. Everyone that is um, on the webinar and is on this. So I'm going to go ahead and spin the wheel. Um, good luck to everyone. Here we go.
All right, it's spinning. I see it spinning. Woo! Dennis Swanson, congrats. You are outfit. Nice Woo job. Cool. So I'm passing back to Gabriel and just thank everyone for coming. Oh, you're muted, Gabriel. <laughs> no? Can't mute, unmute yourself? I can wrap it up if you want me to. Yeah, go you for it, Harley. So, <laughs> folks, I've been waiting for my time to shine. Just kidding. It's actually your time to shine. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we appreciate your, your questions, your participation. Be looking out for more of these events. We have different webinars coming. Julie's shaking her head. I know she wants folks to reach out to her. So, so definitely send out an email to folks to get clarification. Um, we're here to support you. You know, we um, want everybody, all of our future Eagles to feel supported. And, and we thank you so much for joining us. Uh, transfer students, you guys are awesome. Uh, Kareem from the West Side wants to say bye-bye. Uh, Cheyenne too, and, and we're all um, glad to have you. So thanks a bunch, we'll probably wave out. Um, and if you want to see this later, you tell friends this will be available on a virtual website later so folks can get those answers um, and hear them again. So thanks a bunch for joining us. Congratulations to the scholarship winner.